Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Christine Chavon. Our show is Spiritual Exploration. Tonight, we are going to give you the show that you wait for all year long, the astrological predictions for the following year, which in this case will be 2012. 2012 is a very important year. Not, not that other years aren't important, but 2012 is the year that everybody's been looking at and wanting to know what's going to happen and all this kind of things. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Deborah Rose. She is the astrologer who comes here every year, and everybody will recognize her, I'm sure. And uh, hello, Deborah. How are you doing? How are you, Chris? Welcome, Chris. and thanks for coming again this year. Thank you for inviting me. Always a pleasure. I'm sure everybody's waiting with bated breath about, uh, you know, with, for their predictions. And uh, But before we go on, in the event that, that anyone might want to reach you, why don't you give them your phone number? Okay, I can be reached at phone number 718-987-6929. And no, I don't have a website. Most people go on and there is a Deborah Rose on the website. Oh. But it's not me. Oh, all so, right. Uh, it's a woman in Buffalo, New York. But really? You can, yeah. You There's can. several Deborah, Deborah Roses around. Yeah, we have a I, councilwoman. Yeah, then. I know. <laughs> when I say, Deborah Rose is going to be on my show, oh, the councilwoman? No. <laughs> no, uh, Deborah Rose, the astrologer. Okay, fine. So. All right, so it's 718-987-6929. And just leave a message, and then I'll get back to you. So thank Very you. Very good. You're welcome. All right, so you know what? Let's get started because then at the end we'll do, we'll talk a little bit more about 2012 itself. But I'm sure everybody's eager to hear what what you have to say about all the astrological things that are mm -hmm. going to happen. Right. So you go right ahead, and you're going to hear very little, if anything, from me uh, for the next hour. So there we go. <laughs> all right, everybody. Hello and welcome again this year. Good to see everybody again. All right, so we're going to just talk about the planets, um, their, their motion, where they are, what's going on. Jupiter's in Taurus this year from June 4th, uh, ni sorry, uh, 2011. I'm saying 19. Uh -huh, right. Okay, uh, to June 11th, 2012. Jupiter in Taurus is very practical, very sensible. There are opportunities to benefit in the natural world. Ecological and environmental healing and discoveries are going to be taking place this year. We're going to be seeking security and healing in finance as well. That's certainly our recovery as far as the United States. Um, Jupiter will go into Gemini June 11th, 2012 through June 25th, 2013. And there's a really nice sextile, which is a positive aspect to Chiron, the wounded healer, on February 14th of this year. And that means we're going to have some new medical discoveries and awakenings. Jupiter in Gemini is very intellectual, so we're going to move the mind in new directions towards universal thinking, the ability to see, to grow in all areas of our lives. Saturn's in Libra, still there. It went in on October 29th, 2009, and will be there until April 7th, uh, no, I'm sorry, October 5th, 2012. Um, Saturn in Libra at its best is learning diplomacy. It's exalted in Libra, so Libra wants fairness and harmony, and Saturn's the builder. So here we are, building harmony. Um, the lessons are to treat others fairly, to learn how to negotiate, and to build healthy foundations. Saturn's a tough cookie, and Libra restores balance. So we're looking for reform in social, medical, government, and corporate establishments. Um, and in Libra, reforming our views on marriage, since marriage is um, the ruler of the, um, I'm, I'm sorry, Libra is the ruler of the seventh house of marriage in the solar chart. So this is also why you are seeing reform as far as gay marriages and equal rights for all humanity. And that's really what Saturn and Libra is starting to do. It's starting to build that for us. Something very important now, I've gotten emails a uh, good part of November and December, people waiting for us to tape this show and put it on. Um, this year, Venus is retrograde, May 15th through June 27th. That means all of you girls that are getting plastic surgery for Christmas as gifts, <laughs> <laughs> do not do it. Do not wait until May or June. Now, let's be safe. Let's say... 10 days before and 10 days after. So 10 days before the May 15th, 10 days after June 27th. Stay away from those things as far as your surgeries. I must have gotten 10 emails so far this year. Um, and with Saturn and Libra, people are sort of reforming their looks. Huh. Um, 
one of the things that we're going to be looking at too is um, we're going to begin dealing with very deep feelings on love, money, personal wealth, personal power. We're going to take a new look at love, sharing, um, all relationships. Negative manipulative tactics are not going to work anymore, whether it be in a personal relationship or in government. Um, personal honesty, facing your demons, purging the shadows, building better relationships with yourself will lead to building a better relationship in the universe. So um, Libra is going to teach us have faith, turn higher thoughts to spirit and prayer, and have the highest hope for yourselves and for others. Uranus is in Aries, and that uh, began on March 11th, 2011, and will stay there, this is a slow planet, through May 15th, 2018. So Uranus is called the Great Awakener. And we have some exciting, exciting discoveries in astronomy and astrology and in planetary sciences and earth sciences. Expect technological advancements, new sources of energy. Oh boy, can we use that? Wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch the needs of humanity turn towards the individual and then back to humanity. We're going to take government and corporate structures and make them more people friendly again rather than just money making machines. Medicine is going to take a great, great leap forward in servicing the individual with new technology, new procedures, quite an advanced world by 2018. Wow. <clears throat> That's really exciting. You're really leaping ahead there too. <laughs> we really are. In a in a very short amount of time, the next five years. You know, we, we talk about technology changing now. You buy a phone in April and you've got to get a new one in October. Yeah, right. Well, it's going to be a lot faster. Wow. Right? Yep. Yeah, it's going to pick up very shortly. So Neptune is uh, in Aquarius, August 4th, 2011 through February 3rd, 2012. I'm sorry, 2012. I've said... Um, I've said this maybe four years ago I started saying this. When science and spirit blend, or science and religion come together, mankind will move forward in amazing ways. You're going to see spirituality begin to rise uh, a little bit more over organized religions because the deceptions in these organizations will continue to be uncovered. And the theory of universal oneness will become more widely aspected and people will um, be so uh, disenchanted by the um, greed and the power that they're going to start looking towards meditation, prayer, um, all of these things are going to start to gain popularity. And it's going to uh, play a, a very heavy role in our personal healing as human beings. And then February 3rd, 2012, uh, Neptune will move into Pisces. Neptune rules Pisces. So Pisces and Neptune will be home. Uh, and it will move out March 30th, 2025. Mm. So that's a very long transit. Now, Pisces rules compassion, love, universal oneness, all humans, pets, plant, uh, the planet, um, plants, all things living, minerals, will be taken into consideration in healing the earth. We're going to go right back to the source. Think of ourselves as, um, as interconnected. That's how we're going to be looking at ourselves. Uranus rules the oceans, the waters, oil, gases, and drugs. You're going to see reform in all of these areas. Basically, the, the thoughts will be all for one and one for all. Pluto's going to, uh, it is in um, Capricorn. It moved there November 26th, 08, and will stay there until March 23rd, 2023. Pluto is power and intensity. It rules volcanoes. It rules things under the earth. It rules waste management. And you will see a lot of changes in toxic waste. You'll see a lot of changes in weather, in glo like the global, global warning, solar power. All of these things are going to come under scrutiny. It's a slow revolution with humanity wiser, kinder, and more responsible to ourselves and our environment. So those are where the, the heavy planets are this year. Now, Mercury is retrograde. Now, all of you guys, I think I have you pretty well trained, and thank you for the emails throughout the year. Yes, when Mercury is retrograde, Mercury is the planet of communication. It also rules anything technological. So it's actually, it's backwards right now until December 14th. 
So by the time the show airs, it'll be over. But here's, here's something to look back on. If you guys started shopping in late November and bought all kinds of goodies through December 14th, 2011, It'll probably go back and be returned. So just know I said that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Don't buy anything electronic right. wallets. No, I know. And I warned you last year, so if you forgot about it, well, shame on you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, after, you're kind of clear, like from the 17th, December 17th on. But then the problem is nothing's left in the stores. So. Yeah. Okay. So in 2012, March 12th. Um, the Mercury goes backwards in Aries, and it goes direct April 4th in Pisces. July 14th, it goes backwards, 2012. It goes forward, August 8th, in Leo. November 6th, in Sagittarius, it goes backwards. It's direct November 26th, in Scorpio. Now, again, remember, communications get a little fuzzy. Um, you say I'll be there on Friday and we, we get the wrong Friday. You say I'll be there 8 o'clock. No, maybe 9 o'clock. No, I'll come at 7.30. You forget what you said and you wind up there at 10 p.m. Um, loosen up your schedule. Be a little um, agreeable or be a little understanding if things get a little messy. Don't buy big ticket items and please don't buy automobiles, cars, trucks, anything like that under a Merc Retro. That will guarantee you a lemon or something that you don't want. Um, this year I had two people purchase uh, vehicles under the Merc Retro, even though they knew not to. Mm. And um, one girl just got in the truck and hated it, hated it, hated it, and said that she had to bring it back. And she did, uh, to the, probably the loss of like $5,000 oh by the God. time they got her in a car that she liked. Mm -mm. And um, another man uh, drove out of the showroom and had transmission problems on the way home. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny, but it is funny because you won well, in them. In retrospect, now it's funny. <laughs> but he finally he got a new car, too. That's good. Yeah. All right, so the eclipses. Now, remember, eclipses will move you very fast over a period of time. It's a leap. It's a quantum leap. So if you happen to be hit by um, an eclipse, if you have these eclipses within about five degrees of your sun sign or your Venus or your moon, Mercury or Mars, um, you're going to move forward. If you've been trying to get divorced for five years, you're going to get divorced within a year. If you've been trying to have a baby, it'll push you forward. If you've been wanting to move, if you've wanted to change your careers, these are what we use eclipses for. It kind of moves us out, gets the dust off of us, and, and gets us going. Here are the eclipses for 2012. May 20th, we have a solar eclipse in Gemini. Watch weather, earthquakes, especially in Asia. June 4th, we have the lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. This one's a little bit, this one's a little bit tough. Why? Because the moon is opposite, Venus is opposite Mars. I look at this and I say battle time, slow down, especially if you're in tumultuous relationships or if you have difficult partnerships happening. Also, during this time, I'm going to say talk things out, but no signing papers because it could very well be papers that will wind up in a legal battle and cost you an awful lot of money down the road. November 13th, there's a, a solar eclipse. This is an excellent time for personal reform, for changing yourself. Um, there's a, a new moon um, right on that eclipse, and uh, it means new beginnings, new habits. And in Scorpio, it's very transformative, highly transformative. The lunar eclipse to that one is in um, Gemini, and that's November 28th, 2012. And it says, think deeply before speaking. Shallow thoughts can ruin relationships. So those are the planetary motions. Now we're going to start with some of the signs. And as per your request, I'm going to do Pisces first. All of my poor Pisces people were saying, I'm the last person, and you're speaking at 50 miles an hour, and you rush through it. So you I have gave, to rush through everything. I know, no, I really have it. I know, I know like only an 41 hour. 41 minutes left. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, Pisces, you're my first ones, and dear, sweet, sensitive Pisces. Pisces has an ear to the spirit world. Um, they, they live on the earth, but they also have their feet in spirit, kind, sensitive, emotional, and yeah, somewhat dramatic sometimes. This year, Pisces, it's as if everything in your life is magnetized. Your past pain becomes intolerable, and it moves you forward. It clears the past. 
you're desiring divinity on earth in your future. A real, true love can come into your life this year. You're going to throw yourself into your work. You're going to find pleasure. You're going to find joy. You're finally ready to stop dealing with the mediocre, and you're going to allow yourself to be with either like-minded or spiritually-minded people and driven souls. You're going to find somebody who could understand you, and that's very difficult for Pisces. <laughs> Um, career and love can flourish. Just make sure the past is closed. Fantasy and reality can merge, and only someone like you can make those fantasies reality. Early in the year, finances are going to drive you crazy. It can stop you from seeing true love on your path. It can stop you from seeing work and career opportunity. Frustration and anger are going to get the better of you, especially around March 4th through the 9th. You're right on top of the full moon in Virgo at that point, and that's going to drive you batty. Don't let money alter opportunities for future love. Time and communication will allow you to talk things out. If you've lo lost a lot in a divorce, don't worry about it. True love will let you rebuild. If they've lost a lot, don't worry about it again. Again, what love is is such a an amazing happening, and it doesn't happen that often. You don't hear a lot of these things. Each year I might pick a sign that might might maybe two that might be uh, lucky and you're you're it this year there's a lunar eclipse on june 4th and that's going to hit your 10th house of career you may just have come off a lot of opportunities you may have had some um, promotion happen you may have gotten some good press but jealousy abounds so hold your head up more recognition and financial payoff is for you and don't look at the small-minded nonsense around you just ignore it January 23rd, Mars is retrograde until April 13th. There's a new moon on March 22nd. So you have a new financial plan. You have new action, new methods, new opportunity. You'll make money. Be patient. Go slow. One opportunity at a time. You've got a lot of self-nurturing to do this year, Pisces. You've got to take care of your health, massage, vitamins, good food, rest, and the practice of forgiveness. Um, a lot of you are leaving the past behind. A lot of Pisceans get taken advantage of because of their emotions, because of wanting to do the right thing. Just let go and forgive yourself as well as others. Don't put off those checkups. Do follow-ups. And someone's going to come into your life that's going to help heal your past. And you may begin to trust this after June 4th. There's a feeling here of April 3rd or so allowing Pisces to sort of open up and open their heart, but it may take them a couple of months to actually realize what's going on and how amazing this is going to be. There's a desire to learn, to grow, to educate yourself. That'll prove to be very profitable for you in the future. There's possible travel near May 3rd through the 9th. It's also here October 6th and November 16th through the 23rd. I would take advantage of those travel opportunities. And rem remember, it's around those times. It could be anywhere close to that. Early January through the 23rd awakens your spirit. Bring spirit into your daily life. Go back to your whatever your teachings were, wherever your faith lies. June through March 2015 will bring a total awakening and change to Pisces. Allow yourself to heal. Allow your deepest wounds to move away from you so that you're free to accept a powerful and positive future. Think about this. If you allow the past to dictate your future, you'll never really feel the love that's coming towards you. Okay, Pisces, so I hope you're all happy with that now. I'm going to get 50 emails by the time this thing starts to show. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Aries, now you're usually first, so here you are again, Aries. Uranus in your first house, you guys are going to be really exciting. You will change. You will want to. And you will surprise others. You will break old habits, old barriers, old inhibitions, thought patterns. You're moving towards new values in partnerships, relationships. You're better able to see who you are and whom you could be. Um, you're very lucky this year with money, so expect to... Um, gain work. You could win some things this year. You could gain job promotions. You could um, have some positive prospects. There could be advancement in business. There could be great opportunities to come your way to be entrepreneurial. Um, the only thing I want you to do is put some money aside for extra expenses, particularly in late November 
where uh, you just might run into some issues or some tight monies. A lot of signs are going to get hit with that. Uh, love, you're working on a new outlook in love. You're sharing, you're thinking more about building security. You're more willing to become an equal partner in something. Venus is going to be in your fifth house September 6th through October 2nd. And um, it's going to hit your seventh house on October 28th. So you've got some brand new beginnings and some equal opportunities in love, which, you know, Aries is always the leader. They don't like being very equal at all. Mm -hmm. um, health. Mars is retrograde in November. So I want you to be careful with diet, exercise. Don't overdo. Be careful of excess. That, that is such a, an Aries thing. The holistic approach would be favored for you guys this year. Um, be careful of running too fast, bumps and bruises. Um, travel for you this year, May 3rd through the 20th and the first and second week of June are good, as is November 28th. Neptune since sits in your karmic 12th house. You may go into the hospital for tests. You may have family into the hospital. Everybody's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. You don't have, you know, dire or terrible aspects. Just if you need tests or if you need to go there, um, don't put it off. That's another Aries thing. So take care of yourself, Aries. You've got an exciting year coming. Taurus. Hmm. Mars is retrograde in the fifth house. This rules your love life. January 23rd and April 13th, you're looking to the past to regain a lost love. And then you move forward into something new. So you Taurians out there, if you want to regain a new future, some of you are going to have to look to the past Heal it, let it go, and then you're going to go forward. Very, very few Taurians are actually going to stay with an old love. Um, if you do, lucky you, and hopefully you can both grow forward. But this is sort of a, you know how Taurus hates to let go of anything. Uh, so this is sort of a cleanup and then letting go. You've learned an awful lot about sharing, and it's time for some personal honesty and developing a deeper sense of love. You're going to learn to give deeper intimacy before 2012 is done. Until June 11th, 2012, Jupiter, the greater benefic, sits in your first house. It's going to bring you health, but a possibility for overindulgence. It's a very good time for orga organic foods, less sugar, more water, development of uh, willpower and discipline in order to regain health that may have been lost over the past two or three years. Money. Jupiter moves into your second house on June 11th. You're making more. You're saving more. You're paying off debt. I like this for you this year. You're one of my most favorite money signs this year. You're going to have peace of mind and the possibility for a very good sum of money coming between now and 2016. Just discipline your health and your diet so that you're here to enjoy it and you're healthy enough to enjoy it. Travel is highlighted October 9th through the 19th. This year, there's an interest in higher education or spiritual studies. Spirit shows you a new way towards strength and healing is going to help you release some of that stubbornness and help you let go of past hurts so that you can grow into your future. If you have children, January 22nd through April 14th, you may have problems with them. There could also be family, property problems, custody problems, divorce problems, home and foundation issues. Be patient. Just work through it. Don't panic. We say June 22nd through April 14th. That means it goes into 2013. Gemini. Lucky Gemini. Do you know Gemini uh, gets to house Jupiter this year? It's a year of great, great growth and opportunity. You only get to house Jupiter in your sign once every 12 years. So this is it for you, Gemini. Early 2012, um, let's, let's you take a look at loose ends, unfinished business, and I want you to clean house very early in the year between January, let's say in March, and then you're going to go on to a great 2012. Think about doors opening, bringing in the right people at the right time, using your past successes and failures to grow into a brighter future. You can overcome self-limiting behaviors and you can develop a better attitude so that you can attract more abundance and all the things that you do deserve. Work. There's a desire not just for money but for making a difference. Uh, passion is awakened. 
a new view of yourself, a new view of the world, new pathways to walk. Success can be yours. You're getting a little bit away from money and a little more into am I happy? And that's a good thing for Gemini, especially since Gemini could be such a nervous sign. Love, be careful here, Gemini. You're a great communicator and I want you to use it this year. If you're in a relationship, communication is the key. Fooling around or stepping out of a relationship could result in a permanent split. So if you have love in your life and you're getting bored or you're not communicating, go slow, take a look at the person you're with. If you value them, start learning how to communicate. If you don't feel like you can, ask them for help. You'll be very surprised at what happens in that relationship. Money, boy, love and money are tied together this year. You're in love, you're not in love, you want your freedom, you want commitment, you want to move this into something wonderful, you want to spend more time working, you want to marry for love, you want to marry for money. You guys could drive me crazy this year. Money is one thing, love is another. Please keep those things separate. Be, be cautious with your money this year too. You could go through great sums in a very short period of time because of your restlessness. June 23rd through September 20th, watch your health and your nervous system through stress. August 23rd through October 6th, a new exercise, diet, health regime. Uh, travel, January 14th, February 20th. Watch out for the retrogrades too, you guys, on, on, um, on the travel, but those are, those are highlighted. Home, with Mars in your fourth house this year, you could move, you could renovate, you could appreciate your home more, you can start throwing things out, you could clean up. But Mars also in the home, I want you to be careful, check your wiring, fires, um, be careful about tripping or falling around the house. Uh, but Mars does rule fire. Make sure your fire alarms, your carbon monoxide alarms are okay. This year, you're awakening to spirit, especially after June 20th, 2012. Cancer. Now, this is you. That's no. me. There we go. All right, let's see. Okay. Now, you've been suffering the Saturn square, but this year, 2012, you're going to begin to see the light. You're getting your drive and your inspiration back. You are aided by spirit to rebuild and renew. So somebody up there likes you. Mm -hmm. The only place you're still gonna be a little stressed or you're still gonna feel some pain and the, the lack from the planet Saturn is in the fourth house of home. You need to emotionally heal your home. Nice colors, positive energy, clean it up, clean it out. And that's certainly true in your case. It's been what I've been doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of you may be struggling with new careers or business issues. Some of you may be struggling with loss of friends, parents, family, children. Some of you are leaving the nest for the first time. Others are cleaning up after divorces. Many of you who've been hurt in the past are trying to keep love at bay so that you're not hurt again. You're trying to heal your heart. Now, normally I would say, do that because most of us do need to go through a period of mourning and cleaning and the universe gives it to us. But this year, don't do that. Let the universe help you heal by allowing love and friendship in. The solar eclipse on November 15th can revive your love life in a surprising way. Uh, speaking of career, January 23rd, there's a new moon in the eighth house and that can help you with um, money. And if you're dealing with divorce or partnership issues, cash flow can open up from past investments. Uh, that's going to help you also. Mm -hmm. August 17th, there's a new moon that'll stabilize finances. So whatever you start arguing or fussing with or dealing with in January could very well be settled by August. Travel is healing in June, especially near the 20th. Listen to your intuition. It will lead you to new paths. And one of the ways cancer can heal this year is to allow, allow positive changes, allow themselves to be um, 